All right. All right. Welcome. And thank you so much. I saw the comments ahead of time. So, yes, I already see that we have a couple of OGs in the house. I'm Tanya Smith. And I want to welcome you to our weekly live stream show called Stream Like a Boss TV. But we're doing a little bit of a takeover. We're doing a live stream summer school for the months of June and July. And actually, the topic I'm going to talk about right now is stretching and getting out of your comfort zone. And so this, what you see here, happens to be one of those comfort zone things, uh, something that was a breakthrough for me. So I'll tell you a little bit about that here in just a few minutes. But first, I need to welcome you. If this is your very first time watching us at Stream Like a Boss TV, please type in hashtag newbie and let us know that you're here. And if you've been with us before, I have a couple of OGs already in the house. Type in hashtag OG. What's up? Good to see you, Scott and John Lacey. I'm excited for this one, too. A little nervous as well. Every time I share real transparency and talk more about my introverted nature or roadblocks and things that have led me to this point, it can be a little scary. I, you never quite get over all of the, the concerns and the challenges and the fears, right, of being on camera because when you put yourself out there, there is always a risk of someone taking advantage of that. So we're going to talk about that tonight, but I love it. I love it. Mama Pernura podcast in the house. What's up, OG? And then I see my friend, Dan, the man, the honest accomplice. Yo, 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 what's up? <laughs> Stream like a boss. Awesome, awesome. Roy, look at you. Roy Richardson. So tech troublemaker is making trouble. He's an OG, but it is his first time here tonight. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, a Mamapreneur podcast. I can understand that. Says, I'm nervous before each live broadcast of my podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You get a little bit of those tummy tingles, as I like to call them. Yes, and the struggle is real. We're going to talk about that, too. I actually have a slide where I'm talking about the struggle is real. So I want to tell you um, that I am, what's up? Okay, no problem, Yvette. You just stay as long as you need to, and you can come back and watch the rest of it. This is absolutely for you, and I'm going to leave it here. Look, I want to give you all a little history, and then I'll go ahead and dive into our quick little intro transition so that we can get into the content, because this stuff can be deep. It can be really deep. So I don't have tissues nearby or anything like that. I'm just going to be real with you, and we're just going to kind of commiserate a little bit together about this topic of getting out of your comfort zone. But I also want to share with you that what I'm going to talk about tonight is a miniature version of a longer webinar and a master class that I've taught before. And I love actually teaching this. I used to call it, girl, get out of your comfort zone and get on camera. But as you can see, I have a lot more than girls in the audience. <laughs> so this really can apply to anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're struggling with the roadblocks that you're creating for yourself or that someone else may be creating for you, then this hopefully is going to be a message for you, even if it's not specifically about video, but maybe it is about a podcast like Mamapreneur Podcast said, or maybe it's about a different type of media, it's blogging, it's anything that you do. Yes, I know, nerves are our body's way to urging us to strive to perfection. Without being nervous, we don't want to move forward. You're, you're kind of summarizing some of the things I'm going to talk about. So look, if you are not already signed up, this series that I'm doing, like I said, it's a stretch assignment for me. And you can sign up to get alerts over at LivestreamSummerSchool.com. If you go to LivestreamSummerSchool.com, you'll get our full agenda and you'll know everything we're talking about in the months of June and July. And I got a lot going on, but I'm going to make this thing happen I really, really wanted to back out tonight. And again, I'm going to tell you some behind the scenes on that. But I knew, I know that when I show up, the people who are showing up in the audience are the people who are meant to get that message. So you must be intended for me and I for you tonight. And that's why we're going to talk about getting out of your comfort zone. 
So I encourage you, if you haven't been with us before, to definitely stick around. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe, all the things, you know. If there is something that really kind of hits a nerve for you, because I'm going to be interactive with you, hopefully, in the chat. If there's something that hits a nerve for you, I want you to really just kind of stew on that, process that a little bit. Go grab your notepad and your pen and your favorite hydration right now because on the other side of this short video clip, we're going to come back and talk about getting out of your comfort zone. So, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm doing my best, taking care of myself and the tummy tingles. Exactly. <laughs> I know. Look, Michelle said I made it before the bell. Well, we're going to go ahead and hit that bell right now. And then I'm going to see you on the other side of this video clip. And we're going to do our dive into this getting out of your comfort zone thing. But I'm just happy and excited that you're here. Because like I said, whatever is meant for you, I hope that you get that from this message. We'll keep it as brief as we can because this is an abbreviated version. <laughs> but at the same time, I want to answer your questions or be here for you to support if I can. Okay? All right. I'll see you in just a second. All right, all right. Once again, everybody, I'm Tanya Smith with Get Noticed with Video and Stream Like a Boss TV is our weekly live stream show. But tonight is part of our series. We're doing a special series called Live Stream Summer School at LivestreamSummerSchool.com is where you can get all the information and the details about what we're going to be covering. So I've said hello to a few of you. Definitely keep those comments coming. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, following all the things. But let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about this whole concept of getting out of your comfort zone and getting on camera because it can be something that sounds super simple, but it doesn't necessarily always mean that it's simple. So I do have a slide deck for you. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and we'll use it just to keep ourselves organized <laughs> and stay on topic because, you know, I can get pulled aside. I'm, I'm a squirrel hunter. <laughs> like many of you, but I do plan to try to give you something that you can use. And so we're going to stay on topic as much as possible. Now, towards the end, I will answer a question that I know Roy had a question inside of our Facebook group that I want to cover. So I'll leave some time to do that and also to answer any other questions that you might have about this topic. We're going to go ahead and dive on in into getting out of your comfort zone and getting on camera. The thing is... Um, most people don't have a natural comfort zone of being on camera or public speaking. Public speaking is one of the greatest fears. If you look up the list of the most common fears, people don't like to do public speaking. It's one of those things that you have to overcome. Now, not everyone is in that same position, so I hate using generalities, but I will say a lot of people that I talk to, and maybe you too, have this fear of putting themselves out there and speaking in front of other people because there's this sense that there might be some judgment, right? There's this sense that there might be some judgment of what you're saying, that it's wrong or, or not appropriate or that it's not truth or, or whatever the things are that people may be assuming about your commentary and what you're saying. Yeah, I love you, Don, Dan, so much. I know you're trying to throw me off with the squirrel thing, but I'm not going to fall for it. <laughs> I hunt wabbits. Elmer Fudd. Okay, agenda. So this is what we're going to cover. We're going to talk a little bit about why leaving your comfort zone is so important. We're going to talk about how to know where this is for you. Some of these things we won't do a deep dive into because, again, this is like a couple hour long webinar and we're only going to touch the surface. But I think that the things that I can share with you will be helpful. Right. So in our short time together tonight on this live stream, my goal, my aim is really to give you some pointers to think about as it relates to the comfort zone and the thing that is keeping you back from doing more video because Many of you are in the space where I am. You're in my circle, my community, because you want to know how to do more or better videos. 
You want to create more video content. But so many of us get stuck. Like we just raise our hand and say, this is what we want to do. But then we don't take the necessary steps to move those roadblocks out of the way. So I want you right now with me to imagine what if, what if you had no roadblocks? What if you weren't afraid? What if you were just like, hey, comfort zone, what's that? Like I'm all in. What would change for you and what would change for your business if you were no longer afraid to just go for what it is you know you want and to go for your gift? Because if you have a gift, if there's a message that, and I think, here's what I believe. I believe that every single one of us has a message to share. Now, how you share it may be different. But I believe that every single one of us has a story and the experiences and the life that we're living is meant to help someone else. And so one of the things that you'll see in my little slide deck here is what if you were making ripples? What if you were making, because look, every time you step out of your comfort zone and every time you work past the fears and the obstacles that are put in your way, you're making room for someone else to do the same. Sometimes you don't even see it. Sometimes you don't even know that that's what's happening for them, that they're watching you and they're seeing you take those baby steps and win, even if it's in baby little increments of winning. But they're seeing that and they're thinking, you know what? If Dan can do it, then I can do this too. If Michelle took that step, and I know just last year or just a couple of months ago, she was not willing to do it, but I see her, she's done it now. And now that's starting to change how she appears. This is starting to change how she shows up online. It's starting to grow her audience. It's starting to create consistency. She really seems to be an expert and a master in her craft. All of these things, right? Just because you're taking the steps. And some of us take big leaps and you see a big giant wave, right? And some of us take baby steps. I think I'm probably a baby step person and I'm okay with that. I don't think there's any wrong, anything wrong with having the small ripples that end up going out and they still make an impact. It doesn't matter how fast or slow. So I want you to think about that. Like how would your life change if you took a step, if you just dropped one pebble in the pond? How could you change and impact other people's lives? When you get out of your own way, that's when the real work starts. This is where you start to see things happen. Because most of the time, it's not somebody else that has the red light. You know, I think we imagine we have this thing where we're thinking, the reason why I can't do X is because there's this stoplight in front of me and it just turned red and now I can't go. But it's, there wasn't a stoplight there. You put it there. It was a mental stoplight. It was something that you created for yourself to keep from going forward. I want you to really think about that. Some of the things that we imagine as stoplights and traffic lights, they don't even exist except in our own minds. So what would happen if you got out of your own way? Your comfort zone is where you are and what you feel when you are at your most comfortable and you don't have, or at least you don't experience a high level of stress and anxiety. So I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to think about the answer. And if you want, you can put it into the comments. It's up to you, because this is, this is very personal. But tell me about a time or think about a situation where you feel totally at ease and in your comfort zone? Have you ever been in that space where you feel totally at ease and in your comfort zone? I can tell you about a, a time when I felt really totally at ease. Now, this is, this is rare <laughs> these days <laughs> because I'm learning to live in that space, like that space that's right on the edge of the comfort zone and the stretch zone. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Yes, I see you there. Miss Shannon in the house. Hello, Wellness Box. 
I hope it is true. Oh, I put the, the wrong one up. Let me there. There we go. All right. Very true. So this picture that you see right here on screen, I say this is rare because I haven't really been on a vacation, a major vacation for some time, but I am planning to do so here soon. Um, this was several years ago. That literally is me. And we are on, me and my family and our extended family were on a vacation in Jamaica. And we literally were at the house in that movie, How Stella Got Her Groove Back. So this is the backyard. This was the pool that was in the back of the house. And when I want to take myself to a mental space where there's less anxiety and less stress, I think about that trip and how amazing it was and how I could get up every morning and, you know, we had someone there that was cooking authentic Jamaican food for us. So breakfast was ready with all the native fruits. And, oh, my goodness, it was just an amazing time. It was so stress-free. I just remember thinking, I can literally walk outside, walk either to the pool and just lay there or go to the beach and just sit and mind my own business. Like, I don't have to think about anything the phone's not beeping. Um, I don't have people trying to reach me on email. It was one of my favorite moments in time. And so when I really want to de-stress and feel less anxiety, I imagine myself back on this beach or back on the side of the pool. You can see the beach behind me, right? But I imagine myself there and I imagine my family and just how free we felt. And you're not always going to feel that way, but I want you to really pinpoint a time where you felt that lack of stress, where you felt like you were just in the zone. And there's a reason why I want you to even think about that. And I'm going to pull up some of these comments real quick here. Yeah. Michelle said, I've been a lifetime performer and still experience stage fright and nerves. Yes, yes, yes. Even Barbara Streisand would, yep, throw up every time she was about to go on stage. So it does happen. But I want, <laughs> John said, how Tanya got her groove back. I know, right? Uh, let's see, Shannon, I was at a place of comfort on a trip with my husband in Florida, and it was wonderful. Look, when you start to think about those moments and those times that were so good, right? If you need to lean in on that space where you had less anxiety and just put yourself in that moment for a little bit, it can really help you to disconnect from the fear and the anxiety. Look, and I can tell you this for a fact, because I remember there was a point, and it, a lot of this is mental, and this is why I want you to be thinking of that moment, or choose a couple of different moments that you can go back to and really pull up in your data bank, right? I want you to think about that because I was um, I was set to speak for this multicast. I had to do this multi-stream, and this is before multi-streaming was a thing. But I was scheduled to speak on stage, and being the introvert and very new to my business as I was, I had agreed because we were a military family at the time. We still are, but we're uh, a vet now. Um, I was going to speak in front of this huge audience. I didn't know how big it was. I just knew that someone asked me to come and talk about brand building. And I said, okay. And it was a stretch assignment for me because I had just started really getting into learning and understanding the power of branding. And I wanted to talk about it. And I had been invited to the Army Air Force Exchange, right? And so I went to this building. I went to the address, the location that they invited me to come to. And when I get in there, I was like, oh, okay. So it's a pretty mild and moderate crowd. It's not a whole bunch of people. It's a few people sprinkled in there. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> My stomach was still in knots. I had butterflies, but I knew, I felt confident about what I was going to talk about. I had prepared things. And I get up on stage, and I'm standing next to the flag. And then the woman who invited me comes up on the stage, and she, she says, okay, I need to mic you up and prepare you because we're going to multi 
cast you across all these different countries. So then deer in headlights, what? <laughs> so then I got super nervous, like, oh, my God. So it's not just these people in this room, but it's other people who I can't see that are watching. And what I had to do is to put myself in a calmer state of mind. And one of the ways that I did that is by pulling up the memory I just showed you. Just putting myself in a place where I am calm, I am stress-free, and I can do this. I know my stuff. And it turned out really well. That was one of the first time, and actually as I'm speaking this out loud, because I didn't even prepare to talk about that, but as I'm saying this out loud, that was actually one of the first times I ever multi-streamed, didn't even know I was doing it, <laughs> which is crazy, right? You never know how life is going to prepare you. So I want you to have that moment or those moments in your mind that help you to really kind of de-stress and feel less anxiety in moments where you're feeling like, ugh, like that ball of energy in your tummy. Okay, here's what we end up telling ourselves, though. When we hit a comfort zone wall, when we're like, okay, I'm comfortable, I'm in my skin, I'm good, and somebody's asking me to do something that's outside of my comfort zone, we start to tell ourselves things. We start to say, it's too hard. I'm too, and you can enter your own limiting belief right here. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too large. I'm too small. I'm too dark. I'm too light. I'm too something to learn how to do this. Something bad could happen. If I do this, something bad could happen. Look, Several of my String Bosses Academy members will tell you I ask this question often. What's the worst thing that could happen if you did this thing? Nobody's going to die. Nobody's hurt. So what's the worst that can happen if you step outside of your comfort zone? I really want you to think about that. We also tell ourselves, I'm just afraid to try. I don't like to try new things. I am what I am. And it's not that big of a deal. If I don't do this, it's fine. But instead, if we don't do this, we don't get to make that ripple effect. We don't get to make the wave that I showed you the picture of earlier. People don't feel the impact. They don't transform because you didn't transform. You didn't push through the barrier. So how fair is that to them? Yeah, put a picture up somewhere to look at when you need it. Yes, Shannon, I love it. And that's why I keep that picture with me, too, to remind myself to just stay calm, to be calm and it's going to be okay, right? I also keep a picture of my grandmother nearby whenever I'm about to live stream. So whatever works. Now, these are things that we're telling ourselves, right? But let's tie this back to video. We tell ourselves these things about all kinds of stuff. But when it comes to video in particular, I know you're telling yourself some of the same stuff. Look, Dr. Wood, I don't mean to be stepping on your toes, but you know what? If I got to do it to get you moving, <laughs> let's go. Let's step on those toes. Because we are doing a lot. We're doing the most, as I've heard the phrase go. We're doing the most. A lot of times it's as simple as us saying yes. Okay, so I promised you I would tell you a little bit about this whole stream, live stream summer school thing, right? I was going to say no. In fact, I had this idea probably sometime last year to do live stream summer school, but I just, I felt like I'm not ready and no, I can only do one video every week and I'm just too busy. Right. And then something just nudged me a couple weeks ago. I was sitting there and writing out my curriculum for the academy and I was making notes about different things that I had coming up. And I'm telling y'all, June and July is going to be a stressful month. There's a lot happening this month and next month for us. But then I said, OK, well, what's going to happen if I miss one, if I just go ahead and plan for this and just get started and it's not perfect? 
what would happen? Like, what's the worst that could happen if I don't, if I do this? <laughs> If I just go move forward and say live stream summer school. So I went and I found the domain and it was available up oh, when I then sat down and thought about, okay, well, what would I talk about? What are some of the things that have been common questions that have been coming up that people keep asking over and over again? Up oh, tutorials. Oh yeah. Confidence. <laughs> so I started putting this agenda together. Then I thought, well, how am I going to register people? Because I don't want to set up a really complicated landing page. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. I know about that Luma app. I did a video about that two years ago and haven't used it since. I'll use that. All the things started falling into place once I gave myself permission to move past the comfort zone. So I want you to think about that. Something may seem really hard for you right now, whatever that thing is, just take a single step to move forward and watch the doors that open. Y'all are not hearing me. <laughs> like, you're not hearing me. Watch the doors that will open. Just take a single step forward. And all of this came together. Look, I even went on Etsy and I was like, hey, I'm looking for summer beach graphics. And I found this guy who was doing stuff for Twitch. And he said, yeah, I can do, I can, you can take this package and you can use this. And then I'll even create an empty background for you to use since you're doing Ecamm, not Twitch. These are the type of things that were happening and they happened within a week's time. This is not something I was planning for months and months like I used to do. So I want you to really hear me out when I say, if you take a step to move forward and just say yes up here, you'll be amazed at what can come together. Please, please, when I tell y'all, it happens all the time, more than this once. But this is, this is, I hope it's making sense. I hope it's connecting with somebody. So what do you tell yourself when you are outside of your comfort zone? When you get out of your comfort zone, what are you saying to yourself? Yes, John, I know, right? Look, it can be so easy to let yourself off the hook, but that consistency can build momentum. Yes, it can. And it can open those doors. And it's not just the consistency. Sometimes it's just let me move because you've been staying paralyzed. You've been saying, oh, I think I'm gonna do this video. And two, three weeks later, a year later, you still haven't done it. Why is that? Because you keep thinking there are 500 steps and really it only takes one. You take the one step and then you take the next one step and then you take another one step and those steps start to add up. So what are you telling yourself when you're outside of your comfort zone, I want you to pop something in there. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Shannon. I'm hearing you. It's making you sense. When you make up your mind, things fall into place. They do. The resources become available to you. They do. They just, it works that way. It's worked that way. If you think about your life, I bet you it has worked that way often. And you just haven't taken the time to really think about that and, and apply that to this moment and to other things that you really want to do and you've been saying you want to do, but you haven't done it yet. <laughs> so take one step, just one. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit my, about my story. Um, I won't do too much here because, again, I wanted to keep this as a mini master class. So I'm just going to say this. I, When I first started, I was really, really struggling to... Um, when I first started video, that is, I was struggling to find my way because I really did not want to do video. I was fighting it tooth and nail. I said, no, I'm not doing it. It takes too much time. It's too much money. I don't have a bunch of gear. I got a walk-in closet. I got a junky desk. <laughs> like all these things I was telling myself about why I shouldn't do it. And I finally, yes, exactly what Michelle said, I learned to jump and jump scared, jump afraid, jump however you need to jump, but make the move. When you stand there and do nothing, then nothing can happen. Nothing will change. And so that was part of my story was out of desperation, I made the decision to do live streaming. 
because I wasn't trying to do that. But there were just so many things personally in our family um, going on with my husband having gone through the whole colon cancer situation and chemo and traveling and just craziness. And I thought, I really want to continue to do this business thing, but I just don't know how to get visibility anymore. I feel like I'm just churning like I'm on a hamster wheel and nothing is coming from it. And so I made a commitment to do live stream once a week for an entire year. And I committed to that year to see what would happen. But I did not know at the time that this was going to turn into something that would be so impactful to so many people. And look, there are days, even like today, where I feel like, well, I don't know. Do people even care about this? Is anybody going to show up? I didn't have that many signups. Will people be there? And then I have to push through that, and I have to sit down and say, okay, wait a minute. Why am I doing this again? And that's going to be one of the six things that I want to encourage you to do when you think about how you're going to change. So let me get to the six steps that will help you. But before I do that, and thank you, Mamapreneur Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Keep going, keep going. And I want to tell you to keep going too. Keep going. Don't give up. Even if you have to take a little bit of a break, that's okay. We can take breaks. I know there's a lot of talk about burnout. Yeah, John, it's not about the success of a single video. It's about building your own talents and skills. And it's about building your capacity for being able to jump out of that comfort zone. You get more and more comfortable <laughs> with being out of your comfort zone. Let me share with you a couple of benefits to conquering it. Your confidence will grow. You'll learn new things about yourself. You'll expand your creativity. You'll be better equipped not only to face business challenges, but life challenges. Look, some of the things that I've been able to accomplish because of video, they have helped me to be able to model for my daughters what it means to be courageous and brave and to stand up even when you feel like you can't. And I've seen it and I've heard them say things and I've thought, wow, so they were actually paying attention. <laughs> like they were actually watching my video, my live stream. You just never know who is listening and who is watching. That is what I love. That's the beauty of being on video is you may be thinking that no one's watching. You may be sitting there thinking, oh, well, I don't have an audience, or I have one person, I just see one, number one. Like right now, I see three likes in my comments and reactions. But there are several people that are engaging. Yes, I want you to like the video. Yes, I want you to like and follow the channel and all of those things. But more importantly, my hope and my prayer is that what I'm saying is going to make a difference for you because I know it's made a difference for me and for the people that are in my immediate circle. And then there's people that are in my bigger, broader circle that I can't even see. And I may hear from two and three years later, I got to meet my dear friend, Will Davis, who has become a friend online over the past two, three years. I never met Will in my life, but he was liking my content and sharing encouraging words and support. And a couple weeks ago, he said, Tanya, I'm going to be in Dallas. I said, OK, where are you going to be? Where can we connect? And we ended up meeting for the first time in all these years. We met for the first time in person and I got to get a hug and I got to tell him personally, thank you. And he said, I just want you to know that what you're doing makes an impact and that is what is important that's what's more important to me than anything you are so right john you'd be amazed at how many lurkers are lurking and they're lurking not so much because they just want to be you know lurking but they're doing so because they're listening and they're processing information not everybody takes immediate action but they're processing what you're sh sharing and what you're saying and it's making a deeper it's, it could be a revelation that they find out later on, like they watched you Tuesday and then Saturday, all of a sudden a light bulb goes off and it's like, oh, you know what? That, that person on the YouTube channel said <laughs> she was right. 
I need to do that. What's up, Cheryl Brooks in the house? It's wonderful to see you here. Thank you, John. Tell them, smash the like button, y'all. Yeah, it was awesome. It was amazing to finally get to see John in person and to say thank you. It was awesome. Okay, so, but why do you have to get comfortable on video? Why? <laughs> I thought this picture was appropriate, but why do I have to get out of my comfort zone? Look, you don't have to use video. You can certainly use some type of other media. As a matter of fact, I had my good friend M. Shannon Hernandez on not that long ago, and she was doing a content personality assessment or sharing that she has this content wheel, right? That's a personality assessment that will tell you what's the best form of media for you to use for marketing. I love that she has this because it's going to help you to make some decisions about where you really need to be putting your energy and efforts. So video may or may not be right for you, but if it is, I can tell you, in spite of what some people are saying, because I've been hearing some little buzzes about, oh, yeah, well, audio's the thing. And, you know, video's not going to be a thing in a, just another year. No, video's not going anywhere, y'all. Just look around. <laughs> video is here. And streaming video is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. 79% of people in a survey that was taken uh, by a marketing uh, research company said that a brand's video convinced them to make a purchasing decision. Do you realize the power of that? If any of you are business owners, that your video could help someone make purchasing decisions? That is powerful. Look, Amazon Live, all kinds of stuff. Yes. I'm seeing your note there too, John. Yes. So when you think about that, if you research videos to make a purchasing decision in the last 30 days, I want you to put a one in the comments. If you were like, I need to go buy this thing, and then you went and did a search and you watched a video to make a purchasing decision, I want you to type a one in the chat. And I bet you I'm going to see some ones. Because look, what's one of the first things that pulls up when people are looking to purchase something? On the Google page, usually videos. So think about that. Think about the power that you can wield even with a smaller audience. If you're sharing content that is relevant to them, if you're sharing something that's going to be useful to them and that's guiding them and directing them in a certain path. Yes, I know, Michelle, right? One. She put one, 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 one. I <laughs> know Shannon put a one, <laughs> right? It is a thing, y'all. It is a thing. But there are other reasons as well. So the benefits of on-camera marketing, greater visibility, because not everybody's going to do this. Not everyone's going to say yes and push past that wall, that comfort zone wall. <clears throat> Some of you will not feel comfortable, and so you'll just say, I give up. And then some of you are listening to the sound of my voice tonight, and you're going to say, okay, and now I know I don't have to be comfortable in order to take a step. And that's what I want you to really realize. Greater visibility is a thing. Let's see. Yeah, you're so funny. I know. It's true. John put a one, but then said, but the one part of the product I want to see is never shown on the video. I know. But it, the video itself leads you to go do further research on that particular brand. Miss Valerie Hatcher in the house. She has a one as well. Yes. <laughs> I know. I'm the same way. Girl, I, I, if I need to remember how to use something or put something back together, YouTube is my go-to. It's true. So just imagine how you are doing video could be the, the decision maker for someone. It could help them to either learn how to do something or where to purchase and where to go to find a resource. But you can grow your audience with video. It is an uncrowded field because a lot of people are not working past that comfort zone. They're not going to use the techniques I'm going to share with you in a second. They're not going to do this ever because they're just going to say, no, I'm just going to do what I always do. The major platforms are promoting it. Every single major social media platform has what? Video content. So don't listen to what people are saying. There are naysayers out there telling you, oh, you shouldn't do any video because that's not the hot thing. Stop. 
remember that sometimes when you follow the crowd everywhere, you're still going to be that small fish in a big pond. If you make a decision to do the thing that others won't, you get the opportunities that others don't. It's a thing. This is a real thing. So it's incredibly easy to do it because we now have smartphones. You don't have to have, you don't have to start out with a bunch of expensive gear. It can really be affordable to do this right now with your pocket. You pull the pull the pocket phone out <laughs> and you start speaking. That could be a thing. Now, I do want you to make notes about what you're going to talk about so you're not random. But it can be very affordable to do. Yes, I love it. There's even videos on how to embrace this curly hair. Look, both of my girls are curly girls, so I know. Yes. And if you <laughs> if you sell furniture, I have to assemble. There better be a video. Look, video has a lot of purpose. So let's talk about these six ways to get out of your comfort zone, okay? And I'm, again, I'm not going to do a deep, deep, deep dive, but I do want to touch on each of these. And I am going to talk a little bit about this whole growth mindset thing. I don't know if you know that I was a psychology major and I still believe in my heart of hearts. If I had gone for, forward and gotten my doctorate in clinical psych or another form of psych, I probably would be writing papers and books and all kinds of things because I love the study of the mind. But a lot of this is mental. When I tell you that, I'm telling you that because I've experienced it personally, but also because it's rooted in facts. So here's six things. Um, first, let me pull this comment up because I love it. I stopped following the crowd a while back. I got tired of jumping into all the newest apps or the things that I wasn't using. Yeah. <clears throat> and look, it's okay to even jump into these apps. It's okay to jump out of your comfort zone and jump into them, but make sure you have something that's a fallback, right? Make sure that you read the policy and it says, hey, you can return it in 30 days. <laughs> so try it. Give it an actual try. See if it works. And then pull back if it's not for you. I love that just because I'm saying get out of your comfort zone, it does not mean you have to live on the other side of that constantly. Some days you're going to want to pull yourself back into that stress-free zone. You're going to be wanting to be on the beach, hanging out, doing nothing. <laughs> But then there's other days where you really need to stretch. You just take that one step and the rest of the things will fall into place. But you've got to move. So six ways to get out of your comfort zone. Number one is get clear on your why. And this goes back to what I was just saying about the why. If your why is, well, because I want to go viral and I want everybody to love me and I want to get a lot of likes and I want to be on celebrity re reality shows... I mean, that's a why. <laughs> I, I'm not here to judge your why, but usually those are surface level things and there's something deeper. There's a deeper reason. So find that. What is it? What is it? For me, a big why, one of the reasons why I want to make the impact that I, I hope to make is because I believe that there is a need for us to have more positive energy in this world. And I believe that video is a way to really spread more love, to spread more joy, to be more positive, to be more connected with people than we have been. I really, truly believe that. But I also would like to create a sustainable income so that I can support my family and love on them and do more Jamaica trips. Right. Um, nobody gets to judge your why, but you do need to choose. You need to think about what is my why? Why am I doing this? Because the more clear you are on why you're doing video, the more likely you will be to do it. Number two is an adopt a growth mindset. And I have a couple, maybe one or two slides. I'm going to talk about this in a second, but adopt a growth mindset. You've probably heard that phrase. If you watched any TED talks in the last five, 10 years, <laughs> Uh, you probably heard that phrase. Um, number three, accept yourself as you are. You don't have to accept yourself as who you're going to be, but as you are in this moment with all the flaws, all the things that you don't like, that pimple that popped up last night. I got one that popped up somewhere over here. All of that, 
Accept yourself as you are and get on camera anyway. Because guess what? The other people on the other side of that camera are human too, and they probably have had some of the same challenges. We're all human. Number four, have a plan. So remember I said you can pull the phone out of your purse or your pocket, but I do want you to think about what you're going to say on camera. Like just, unless you're just really, really good at doing random, <laughs> what I really want you to do is to have a plan, that a strategy that points back to your business goals. Um, number five, know that you're in it for the long game. Be prepared that it's not an overnight success story for most people. Definitely not for me. I'm not one of those that's going to sit up here and say, yeah, so I got on camera and then in the first three videos I did, I just had this huge audience. No, I sure didn't. I probably did not have an audience for a good, I don't know, three, four months. <laughs> and I still was showing up. And I still just kept taking baby steps and improving every single video. I just kept improving. And I still, to this day, continue to try to improve and add things and to take things off. So be in it for the long game. And number six is to find accountability partners. If you don't have someone that's cheering you on, I can be that person for you. I know it, it can be hard sometimes because sometimes your friends and your your family, they don't understand. They don't know this world of business and entrepreneurship, right? Be around other entrepreneurs that are doing similar things because you, many of you are facing some of the same challenges with time management and how to create the best content and what to say and all those things. So finding accountability partners is really key. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. That lack of audience is a feature, not a bug. Make the mistakes while no one is there to see them and get the practice in. Yes, I love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you for saying that, John. Okay, just a few more quick slides, and I'm going to make sure I answer questions. That why you have a message and a gift that only you can share. Something is pulling at you. Something is telling you you need to get the message out, and video is more than likely the thing that can help you to do it. This is what I wanted to share with you in terms of fixed mindset versus growth mindset. So when I said you need to have a growth mindset, there's a lot of people that have a fixed mindset and don't know it. Here's the difference. A fixed mindset person says, I can't change. I'm already where I'm going to be. I've been this way for 40 years. This is just where I am. <laughs> Right? This is who I am. A growth mindset person says, I am a continuous learner and I can improve. Doesn't matter how old I am. Doesn't matter where I am in my life, you know, my chapters and my journey. I have the power to be able to learn from where I am and to grow from where I am. So when you think about that, that is a whole different playing field that you put yourself into. When you're in a fixed mindset, you say things like we were talking about earlier when it comes to video. Well, I'm not good enough to get on camera. I'll probably mess this up. I'm not really a natural. So-and-so over there does well, but that doesn't mean I can do it. Why am I even trying? Or I just don't feel like it today. I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow never comes. These are fixed mindset statements, y'all. The growth mindset, ah, I don't have it. I think I was going to go ahead and wrap it there. The growth mindset people say, I can learn this. All I need is to find resources. And to find the resources, all I need to do is to ask. Right? And to ask, all I need to do is to open my mouth. Open your mouth. Ask for the resources. This is why I'm building the spaces that I'm building. I'm making new iterations of different communities every other day. I just bought the domain Content Creators Cafe. So we had Stream Boss's Cafe. I'm getting ready to open up an accountability space and a co-working space for content creators whether you're making video or audio. So watch for that soon. It's not ready yet. I'm still building things out, but I am very excited about that. And I have learned because of where I am in my life, we don't have a lot of time to waste. 
So all those excuses you keep making about, oh, well, you know, I don't have this or I'm not ready, all of that, or I need to have this whole full funnel built and all these landing pages and email sequences. Look, I know what I do is not perfect, but it gets done. And when I have an idea, I've learned not to sleep on that too long. I got the idea, let's go. Because you're not guaranteed your time on this earth. But what you can do is take the time that you have, and if you're given a gift of an idea, a seed of an idea of something that you need to do, you got to set that, so that time aside to get it done. And again, when you start taking the first step, the resources will be attracted to you. They just come. So I hope this has been helpful. I do. I wanted to do a baby master class and not do a full out like two hour long thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I wanted to make sure to at least get some of the main points across to help you hopefully to move yourself forward and to stop being stuck. This I wrote more than anything for the people. Yes, the five minutes in, I'm glad I pushed myself. Yeah, I'm glad I went ahead and did this video tonight. I am really tired. <laughs> you may not be able to tell that, but I got up super early this morning, and it's been a long day. But I knew that the minute I got on camera, when I started that countdown timer, I'm all in. I'm present with you. I'm here, and I'm assigned. This is an assignment for me to speak to you and to talk to you about what I promised I would. So when you take your video as an assignment and you think, okay, I don't know who I'm going to impact, but my mantra when I first started it and I was doing that year was right person, right message, right time. I just, I had that on sticky notes all over the bottom of my screen and I just kept repeating that to myself to like move myself mentally forward to do that video, even when nobody was there. Right message, right person, right time. Whoever is showing up, they're the right person. Whatever comes out of my mouth based on what I thought about, and even if it switches up a little bit because there's a need, there's something that's telling me I need to switch things up and I need to go in this direction, right message, the timing you're gonna experiment with. I had I chose three different times that I've experimented with over the past couple of years. This has been the time that I find to be my favorite. It's my time when I know I can be at my best for you and that you show up and it just comes together. So stop going out and finding those blog posts and those articles and asking these publishing platforms, what's the best time to do such and such on social media or what's the best time to publish a video? Yes, you can use that as a guide but you also are going to need to experiment because your audience can be different. Your energy level may be different, right? You may be on a whole different playing field. If you got low energy level in the mornings, but somebody told you you needed to do video in the mornings, maybe it's a good time for you to say, eh, let me experiment and see if maybe doing it in the evenings <laughs> is better for me and vice versa. Yes. And thank you, Kimberly G said it. Don't put down small audience. It's the right pair of eyes we want. You are so right. You never know who is watching. It's the quality of your audience. It's the quality of the people who are connecting with you. They feel engaged and attracted to the message you're sharing for a reason. And it may not be the big crowds. And that's okay but you nurture them and you love on them and you share with them content based on what you've studied and you know they need and what you believe that you are an expert in and that you've prepared yourself to be expert in. Yeah. <laughs> John said, I heard someone say morning was the right time. And I'm like, time zones exist. We aren't even on the same day. Exactly. John's in Australia. So you find the time that works for you. I give yourself permission to experiment. This whole thing about video is an experiment. So do that. When you're thinking about comfort zone, it doesn't get to be defined by someone else. Your comfort zone is your comfort zone. It is what it is for you.
What does that look like for you? And what do you need to step past? It may look different than someone else. Well, I hope that you all were able to get some goodness from this call tonight, from this little mini master class. And I also hope that you will come back and join me for some more live stream summer school. I am going to keep this video up on YouTube so that you can come and check out the replay. I'm also going to be adding new tutorials in the month of June and July. So the whole schedule is at LivestreamSummerSchool.com. Make sure you sign up and then you'll get email alerts and reminders. And if we have to make any changes, which we might, because we got stuff going on in the summer, um, then I'll communicate that there for you as well. But for the most part, every Monday for the next several weeks, um, I think we skip the week of 4th of July. But every other Monday besides that, we'll be doing a tutorial on a different live stream platform. And then we'll have other topics like the one we had tonight. Um, and if you've got questions, let me answer this question really quickly. So for those of you who are ready to hop off um, and you're done with the get out of your comfort zone topic, that's cool. What I do want to do is to make sure that I share this with you, though, real quick. Hold on. Um, there was a question inside of our group, and I want to answer for Roy. So let me pull this up. I've just got all kind of stuff like flying everywhere okay so what were we gonna do Roy you had a question and your question if I can pull up like all my windows are disappearing here let me try this real quick hide pull them back up uh, like my main window just popped off Show all utilities. There we go. Hey, okay. Let me do this. I'm going to answer this question, but for those of you who need to go, I completely and totally understand. Remember to go ahead and like, follow, and subscribe before you leave. Look, Roy asked this, and I'm going to give you a high-level answer because I always, in my Facebook group, offer to answer questions. So I do an AMA, and I will probably split this part off in a separate video for you as well, Roy. Um, but the question was, he says, this probably takes one of your full courses to fully answer, but how do you juggle it all? <laughs> he said, I want to build out my newsletter. How do you get subscribers? I do a biweekly newsletter about content creations and content creators. I've used it as a CTA, so call to action on my live stream. But there, I would rather ask viewers to like and subscribe and 10,000 follow-up questions. <laughs> So you have 10,000 follow-up questions for me. Okay, I'm going to try to answer this high level. So the first question about how I juggle it all, the main thing I would encourage you to do is to find a system. I'm a big system person. So one of the things that you need to do is find a way that feels right for you to organize your content strategy. Um, for me, I tend to use Airtable primarily, but I also have a task planner called Task Aid. T A S K A D E dot com, which uses AI and some other things. It's like been really a lifesaver for me, but it helps me to be able to do things like mind map out ideas, um, put task lists together. And now that they have the whole AI component to it, I could go in there and say, I need a new project list for creating a video about X. And then it, types out an, an entire outline of things that I need to do and I can go in and tweak it and use that. Now, specific to the newsletter question, oh, and for my Airtable, Airtable, by the way, I use, I have actually shared that. So for those of you who are going to invest in the live stream to leads course, because we're going to make it even more robust, we just delivered that a couple of weeks ago. You get a copy of my Airtable planner, a light, I'm going to call it Airtable light because mine is like a monster, <laughs> but it literally maps out all of my content, social media, um, live stream, maps out every piece of content. Every time I'm going to be speaking, any webinars, or workshops I'm going to do, present presentations, all of that is in one singular calendar. If I have to create content for something, it's in that Airtable planner. So if you are a live stream to leads course participant, you'll get a light version of that included as a bonus. But 
building out your newsletter and getting subscribers, I'm not a master at that. So I'm going to give you the names of a couple of people that I think are. Um, one would be Liz Wilcox, L-I-Z, Wilcox, W-I-L-C-O-X. Love her. You can tell her I sent you. Liz has an amazing strategy for email and for creating um, a regular and consistent email strategy. And even though I have taken some of her classes, I still that's my Achilles heel right there. So the other thing you can do if you're not taking classes or doing it yourself, and this is where I'm heading now, finally, after all this time, you can outsource and hire someone to do that part for you. So if you really don't feel like that's a gift for you to put something together regularly and consistently, get help. I'm also going to be talking with my really dear friend and my partner, my, my mastery mentor, um, would be Ty Goodwin. Ty and I sat down and I paid her for a strategy session. Even though we're friends, we understand, we pay each other for services. And I paid her for an hour of strategy and she helped me to work through some things, and I'm going to be paying her again to help me to sit down and write out my auto sequences. But if you can do that, um, if you get the help from different resources that have that gift, that would be my suggestion. Um, and as a CTA on your live stream, yeah, you mix it up. So I've talked about this before, that the calls to action can be mixed up depending on the content of the video that you're sharing and um, what you have going on at the time, if you've got things coming up. So when I know I'm going to be launching Stream Bosses Academy, there's specific and certain CTAs or calls to action that I use in my script. And yes, I do realize the whole idea of evergreen and all that on YouTube. I get it. But I also know the power of timing. And most of the time for live streams, people are going to watch closer to the time that you're actually presenting the information. Whereas with uploaded videos, right, the VODs, videos on demand, that could be any time. So I don't worry too much about it not being evergreen. And I always have a way for people to go to a link and they can see a page that says, oh, we don't have that right now. So Stream Bosses Academy is not in session at the moment for, you know, registration, but we will be in a few months. So I have the countdown timer on the page. So there are things you can do. But mix up your calls to action and make them appropriate to the content that you're sharing and to the events and the things that are going on in your business. I am all about strategy. If nothing else, if you don't hear anything else I tell you, when it comes to doing video, it's not just about doing the videos. It's not just about recording and putting it out there. It's also about how am I tying back the video content that I'm delivering to a business goal or a set of business objectives. This is one thing that many people who do video marketing very well, they don't do business very well, but we want to have the marriage, the perfect marriage of both, right? That's what we want in Stream Like a Boss TV land. <laughs> so I hope I answered your the, the initial questions and we can talk a little bit more later um, in the group, but those are some ideas and thoughts. Okay, folks, that is it. You're so very welcome. So emotional this evening. Don't be emotional, chocolate. Thank you, John. John reminded me. I didn't even see your reminder, but you know what? I can always count on you, so I so appreciate you for putting that up there. David Heath, thank you. Thank you for being here and for watching. I appreciate you being here. All right, everybody, that's all I got for tonight. I, you got a little bit more than I planned, but it's just because I wanted to make sure to keep my promise and answer that question. And also, I hope that um, you will sign up for live stream summer school and come back next week. I can't remember what we're talking about, but it's one of the streaming tools. It might be Restream. So I'm doing walkthroughs on Monday. Right. So Monday, I will talk about the next live streaming platform or tool that's going to be on the docket. You're so welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Radiance Pyrethilia. I love it. Thank you, Cheryl Brooks. Look, I love that I get a chance to be here with you every week. It is the highlight of my life to be able to do this with you.
it's not just at you. It's with you because you're here and I'm here and we're in. This is like no coincidence that we're here together. I really believe that. So thank you, Valerie. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Bim. Valerie's Aging with Grace and Style is a new podcast. Y'all need to check it out. Cheryl Brooks, thank you. Isn't that cool? It just came together. I'm telling you, I just stepped out there and said, hey, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to stop making excuses. I'm not putting it off anymore. So now what? And then all of a sudden, the thing started coming together. Oh, thank you. John said, next week, overview of Restream. Overview of Restream. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Everybody, I hope you have a wonderful evening. And please stay safe. Always know that you are loved. Always know that you are appreciated. And know that you have a message to share. And you can share that. You can use your voice with video. I will see you next week in the stream. Thank you.